Hey everyone, Charles Judd here, and in this video I'm looking at the 1.4c topic of OSPF path preference. OSPF looks at both the type of route and a cost metric to determine the shortest path for any given destination. First I want to explain what the preferred order is, and then we'll take a look at this in action within a lab environment. So first let's discuss our path preference order. Before OSPF takes into account the cost metric, the type of route is first examined. So regardless of a route's metric or administrative distance, OSPF will first choose routes in the order seen here. This is per RFC 3101, which describes the path selection order used by Cisco in iOS 15.1 and later. So this may be different, from some other texts that you've seen around or in older publications since this RFC has replaced the old RFC 1587. Also, depending on your iOS version, if you're running an older iOS version, you might experience a different order than we see here in the updated iOS order. In any event, you can see that the preferred order is intra-area first, followed by inter-area, then NSSA Type 1 and External Type 1, followed by NSSA Type 2, and finally External Type 2. So path selection happens first based on the route type, followed then by the cost. So for example, if we have a prefix learned as both intra-area and inter-area, the intra-area path is preferred even if the cost of the inter-area path is lower. Let's look at this in a live lab now to demonstrate OSPF path preference. Notice that in our topology, every router is configured with a loopback address of all 11s. This is going to allow us to easily see our path preference for this prefix that's shared from all of our routers. So first on R1, let's say show run, pipe to section router, OSPF, and let's take a look at our configuration. You'll see that we have a network statement for each of our neighbors, R1 through R5 being in area zero, and we see R6 and R7 in area one. Also notice that we have area one configured as a not so stubby area. We see that here in our configuration. We did that so that we will be able to see NSSA type one and type two routes later. If we say show IP OSPF neighbor, we see that we have full adjacencies with all of our neighbors here. Everything's in the full state, so that looks good. So let's go ahead and copy our run statement. Let's go to R2 and let's paste that in here and take a look at the configuration from R2. So we see a simple configuration as indicated in our topology. The loopback is advertised into area zero here. We see the all 11s network. So we have an intra area prefix advertisement. Let's go to R3. We'll paste that in and run the show command here as well. A little different situation. We have a loop back here being advertised into a different area. It's advertised into area two. So this is going to give us an intra area prefix advertisement. Let's jump to R4 and we'll be able to see that this is participating in area zero as well. And our loop back interface is not participating in OSPF at all. This is going to allow us to create an external prefix advertisement. In order to do that, let's redistribute this loopback into OSPF. So let's say router OSPF one, redistribute connected subnets. And if we look at contextual help, we want to use the metric hyphen type keyword that we see. And if we look at help again, you'll see we can redistribute this as an E1, an external type one, or an E2, an external type two. The difference in these is that with E1 routes, the cost of the route is the external cost plus the internal cost used to reach that route. If you configure an E2 route, the cost is always going to be just the external cost. There's no consideration made for the internal cost to get to that route. And that's why we see type two preferred over type one for path selection. So let's make R4 here a type one and hit enter. Let's go to R5 and we'll do our show command again. And we're gonna see the same story. We need to redistribute our loop back into OSPF. So let's go under router OSPF one, redistribute connected subnets. We'll say metric hyphen type. And this time we're gonna create a type two and hit enter. Let's go to R6. We'll paste our run statement here as well. 
And here we're going to see that we are configured. We see that we're configured as a not so stubby area for area one. We also still need to redistribute the connected subnets here, but we're going to make this loopback an N1 advertisement, an NSSA type one advertisement. So let's go under router OSPF one, redistribute connected subnets, and we'll say metric hyphen type, and we'll set that to type one. So it's actually the same command you'll notice. What makes these N1 routes instead of E1 routes is the fact that we are in a not so stubby OSPF area. N1 routes are similar to E1 routes, while N2 routes are similar to E2 routes. It's just all dependent on whether or not you're in a not so stubby area. Let's go to R7 and let's paste our run command here as well. And we're going to see the same story. We have a not so stubby area configured in area one. We need to redistribute and we're going to set it to type two metrics in this case. So let's say router OSPF one, redistribute connected subnets, metric type two. Okay, with all of that in place, let's go back to R1 now. And let's again say show IP OSPF neighbor just to verify that everything is good and we do see all of our router adjacencies. So now we have all of our routers, R2 through R7, all advertising the all 11s network back to R1 in various manners. Let's see what path we prefer at the moment. Let's say show IP route OSPF. And we have a single route listed for our all 11s network. We see the status code O letting us know that this is learned via OSPF, and this is an intra-area route. And this is going over our link to R2. We see the 12.12.12.2 interface here listed, which tells us this is going over to R2. So the loopback for R2 shares area zero with us. So that's exactly what we would expect to see as our first preferred path. Let's go to R2, and let's get rid of this loopback interface. Let's say, Interface loop back zero, and we'll shut down that interface. We'll go back to R1 now, and let's say show IP OSPF database, and take a look in here. We're gonna see our type one LSAs at the top. These are our type two LSAs. We'll scroll down just a little bit more, and we see a type three LSA advertised from router 3.3.3.3, which is of course router three. If we complete our output, we're also going to see some type five, you see those here, and some type seven LSAs as well, both advertising the same all 11s network. But our type three LSA should get preference. So let's arrow up and say show IP OSPF route. And we do see this network now listed with the OIA code, which tells us it was learned via OSPF and that this is an inter area route. Our topology indicates that the loop back on R3 is in area two, so that's exactly what we would expect to see. Let's go over to router three, and let's also shut down this loop back interface. Go back to router one. Let's arrow up and again say show IP route OSPF. And this time we see that our N1 route is preferred, N1 being the OSPF NSSA external type one route, and that's going through R6 in our topology. We can see the interface 16.16.16.2, which is on router six. And this is a router from our not so stubby area. If we say show IP OSPF database, near the bottom, we're gonna see our type five and type seven LSAs. We see the all 11s network advertised here in both places. Per our updated RFC, Type seven LSAs are gonna be preferred over type five in this case. So in other words, we prefer the N1 route over the E1 route. So this is exactly what we would expect to see. Let's go over to R6 and let's go under our loopback interface. We'll shut that down here as well. We'll go back to R1 and we'll again say show IP route OSPF. And now we are down to our E1 route type, our OSPF external type one route. And then you can see this is going over R4 at 14.14.14.2. If we say show IP OSPF database, we're gonna see this prefix as both a type five and a type seven. We know that R4 is an E1 route, which will be preferred over the E2 type route from R5, and it'll also be preferred over the N2 type from R7. 
So let's go to R4 now. We'll continue to narrow down our network. We'll go under our loopback interface. We'll shut down the loopback on R4. We'll go back to R1 and again say show IP route OSPF. And this time we're gonna see that we have our N2 type route, which is our OSPF NSSA external type two. The IP address indicates that we are going over router seven. So let's say show IP OSPF database. And near the bottom of that output, we're gonna see our N2 route, the type seven LSA preferred over the type five LSA that's coming from router five, which is our E2 route. So needless to say, if we take this N2 route out of the equation by going to R7 and shutting down our loopback interface, we should see our final type, which is E2. Let's test that out. Say loopback zero, we'll shut that down, jump over to R1. And one more time, let's say show IP route OSPF. And we do see our final route type listed here, E2, which is OSPF external type two. And this is of course going over R5, the only remaining router advertising that loopback. If we say show IP route OSPF database, this is gonna confirm that the only place we're gonna see this network advertised is as a type five LSA at the bottom here, and it's being advertised from router five. So that's a look at OSPF path preference. I hope you found this content useful and I wanna thank you sincerely for watching.